Hey guys, welcome back. What's up? Hopefully you are all having a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Uh, today I want to give you an update on how studying for the CHT is going for me. And I also want to share some really big news on a big decision that I've made in the last month. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so you guys know that I have been hemming and hawing and trying to decide whether or not I'm going to take the CHT exam in November or if I'm going to wait another year. It's so much material and it's so overwhelming. So basically this year in February, I went to the ASHT hand therapy review course and it was super stressful. Um, I benefited a lot from it because it really scared me and made me start studying um, and it also came with a really really nice handbook with all these lectures and slides and all this course material that's been really helpful in guiding me to study and how to organize my studying um, but basically I started February um, 2019 so it's been several months now I've been kind of going back and forth and not super into my studying and trying to focus on different things each month I've been still enjoying my life and still having balance and work and social life and friends and if I want to go do something then I don't study and I'm not worried about it. Um, but the last month, about two months now, so I guess right after um, my birthday, so at the beginning of July, I started to study a lot harder. I started to really like fuel myself forwards. Um, I was going through a lot of different stressors in my life and I decided to instead of letting those stressors get me down and get to me that I was going to fuel myself by working towards something that motivates me and to put all of my energy into that so the last two months I've been studying really super super hard um, and I think I came to the realization in the beginning of this month in the beginning of August that I don't want to study this hard until next May for the CHT exam. Like, I do not want to spend hours a day, spend my weekend time doing this for that many more months. So, I made the decision that I'm going to take the CHT exam this November 2019. I'm so freaking out, you guys. I have only told a few people. So, you guys are super special. My YouTube people are super special. You are some of the very select few people that I'm telling. So, um, I've only told like a couple of my coworkers, um, one of my closest friends, um, and my family, my parents. I haven't told my boss, my work, um, just very few people. So, shh, don't tell anybody because it's a lot of pressure. And, uh, yeah. So basically, I'm just taking the leap. Like, I fully anticipate that I might not pass this first time that I take it, and I'm just accepting that, and I'm going to be okay with it, and it's going to be so horrible if I don't, but I will get through it, you guys. Like, everybody, life is full of trials and failures and then leading to successes, and every time that you fail or you um, feel like something goes horribly wrong, I really think that good things come out of it, so... Whether or not I pass this first time is, we'll see. It's all up to me and all up to the test and how much work I can put into it um, and how much I can really learn. But I'm really excited. Uh, I'm really, really motivated. So it's been cool. I feel like I'm learning a ton right now. I am exhausted. I don't know. You can probably tell I look probably terrible. I have bags under my eyes all the time. I'm really tired. I look like a walking zombie a lot of the time. Um, in the last month since I made this decision, I have kind of cut myself back a little bit from social get-togethers get and outings because I'm working full-time still and I talk to you know, my 20 patients every day and all my coworkers. I'm having to talk to a lot of people every day and on the weekends, I just don't have enough energy to do it anymore. So I just really, I'm focusing, I'm going all in. Um, I'm not only studying, you know, I still am doing things that I enjoy doing like painting and crafting and playing music. I play the ukulele, so I'm still doing things that I enjoy. I'm still going to the gym, um, but all of my free time is now pretty much directed towards studying. <laughs> So yeah, it's intense. It's super intense. Um, but if you guys have any tips or anything that you've found to be super helpful, I'm always 
loving to hear what you have used in the past, what's been successful, what strategies have not been successful, what to expect. Yeah. So as always, I want to share with you guys kind of what my studying has looked like in the last month or so since I've gotten really serious and kind of um, my study schedule, my <laughs> study split, if you want to call it that. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about next. So I've been using three basic books or resources. So the first one that I've been really using a lot heavily is this ASHT hand therapy review book. So I've been going through each chapter. It's filled with um, lecture slides from different OTs, CHTs, PT, CHTs, um, everybody that was at this hand therapy review class that I took earlier in the year. And it's been super, super helpful because it's a very general overview, but it's helping me to tease out which topics are important and which diagnoses are important and what I need to freshen up on. So I've been going through this like pretty slowly, pretty thoroughly. I've been doing a huge, huge focus on anatomy, a huge, huge focus on learning nerve um, structures because that's really hard for me. It's something that I never fully grasped when I was taking anatomy and something that I really am appreciating the understanding that I have of it now. So it's really cool because I'm able to feel like I'm solidifying this knowledge and that I'm going to have this knowledge forever, which is going to make me a better hand therapist and a better clinician. Um, so that's been a really huge resource for me for a while. Um, and then the other thing that I'm doing a lot more of now is making my way through the purple book. So it's about 500 pages. I think I'm like only 130. 40 pages in or something like that, but I'm going chapter by chapter. I'm trying to do at least a chapter every couple days um, and just going through these questions. When I don't know the answer, then I try to read thoroughly on the topic and try and figure it out because there's some chapters like the one I just started today is the edema, lymphedema, and vascular disorders. Like I haven't studied that stuff in a long time, so I'm going back to my rehab of the handbook and I am kind of going through those chapters of things that I don't know and don't understand um, and that's been a really helpful resource as well. It's very dry and it's very technical but honestly if you don't go cover to cover and you just pick the topics that you want to get a better understanding of that's been really helpful. Um, I've also been learning a lot of the diagnostic tests or special tests for different diagnoses and I found that YouTube is a huge helpful resource. There are a few different YouTube channels that seem to be really refutable sources that um, I trust and I believe that they are teaching me good knowledge but just seeing somebody perform the special test it makes it so much easier to understand than just reading about it. So I'm a very visual learner and a kinesthetic learner. So when I see it on YouTube, then I can practice it on a friend or a colleague or even on, on a patient um, and try and really ingrain those materials into my brain and like really memorize them and learn them and be able to pull them out when I'm evaluating my patients. So those are the main study tools that I've been using right now. I'm also using a lot of um, like a whiteboard because I tend to do really well with repetition and recall. And so instead of just, you know, imagining that I'm recalling things, I can use my whiteboard to actually, you know, pick a topic and then write it out. Um, so I'm not necessarily copying notes, but I'm forcing myself to say, hey, the radial nerve, what is the order of innervation to all of those muscles and what are the sites of entrapment and <laughs> all of those kinds of questions that um, that I can then force myself to pull out from my memory and make sure that I know the information. So that's basically what I've been doing um, with study materials right now. The study schedule that I've been trying to follow, um, so I work Monday through Friday uh, I don't study at all on Fridays. It is a rule for me. I take one day off a week. That's it. That's my one night where I can come home and do nothing because I'm exhausted after a full week. But every other day I'm trying to at least get in a little bit of study time, whether it's 30 minutes to two hours. Um, the weekend days I'm trying to study like three to four hours a day if I can. Um, and I break it up by about an hour chunk because it's about all my mental capacity has the time for or um, the focus for. So I come home from work. Um, I usually go to the gym right after I, 
um, have worked and then I come home, I eat, I shower, and then I start studying. And I study for about an hour to an hour and a half on the weeknights, um, depending on how tired I am. And then I go to sleep. <laughs> and then on the weekends, I'm trying to get up you know, at a normal time, an early time, kind of get my day going, do a little bit of exercise in the morning or groceries, whatever I need to do, and then come home and spend an hour studying, take like 30 minute breaks, another hour. I tend to be better focused in the morning, so I'm trying to capitalize on that right now. Um, but that's basically what study schedule I'm following and I'm gonna continue to follow that until the exam, which is in two months now. I am taking a one week vacation um, with my parents. I'm driving down the 101 in October with them for a week and I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna bring some of my study materials along with me because I just don't know if I can take a whole week off. Um, and then I have, a, my friend is visiting me next weekend, so I'm not gonna do any studying next weekend, which I'm a little bit nervous about, but it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Okay, I'll catch up, I promise I'll work super hard. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. Sorry it was like a crazy hot mess of me rambling. This is basically me on a daily basis right now. Um, yeah, I'm really excited but also really nervous about this test and I know that it's a huge, huge amount of work but I am committed. I'm 100% motivated. I'm really excited to be learning what I'm learning. I feel grateful every day that I get to be a hand therapist and that I get to work with amazing patients and that I get to constantly learn new things and try to be a better practitioner um, and it's amazing to me with with each year that I've been practicing so I've only been a hand therapist for three years now but every year I just learn so much more and I feel so much more confident and I feel like I know how to treat my patients better and how to give them better experiences and better outcomes um, I love what I do. I truly, truly love what I do and it's hard and I'm tired a lot of the time and, but I love it. It's so, ooh. you know when you're just passionate about something and it just, I think find something in your life that you're passionate about and you will definitely feel grateful and definitely feel like you're doing something with purpose in your life. Um, Wow, super cheesy moment. Gosh, this video is just a ridiculous hot mess, but so is my life right now, so I guess it makes sense. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and coming with me on this horrible rambly journey. Uh, hopefully it's not too back and forth and all over the place. Uh, let me know if you have any tips for me or any suggestions for me or kind words. I appreciate it all. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Thank you for watching.